This morning I was reminded that today is the 39th anniversary of Elvis Presley's death. Upon reading this, I immediately thought of where I was when I received the news. My family and I had concluded our annual vacation and were packing our bags in a room at the Oxbow Motel in Falmouth, Massachusetts. My brother heard the news first, and he passed it on to my parents and me. What a way to top off a summer escape. My mom first saw Elvis when he performed on the Ed Sullivan Show on September 9, 1956. She had one of the original pressings of Hound Dog on a 45. My brother and I used to play it over and over. On the evening of December 8, 1980, I was still celebrating Jim Morrison's birthday when I heard that Mark David Chapman had assassinated John Lennon. At first, I was angry because John Lennon's murder put the kibosh on my Jim Morrison tribute featuring music by the doors. This selfish reaction was followed by guilt because I allowed such thoughts to happen. I wasn't a Beatles fan, but my mom had one of the original pressings of I Want to Hold Your Hand on a 45. My brother and I used to play it over and over. In the early 80s, I was into the 27 Club Troika, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin. I played the bass guitar during high school and was in and out of some experimental rock heavy metal bands. I wrote a song titled, All My Idols Are Dead. I half sang and half shouted the lyrics. It was pretty terrible. But damn, did I have fun. I was picture framing at the Art Barn in Austin, New York on September 11th, 2001. I remember who I was with and how we heard the news about two planes crashing into the World Trade Center. We all understood that the world had changed much in the same way it had after the success of the Trinity Test on July 16th, 1945. In 1946, Robert Oppenheimer said, It did not take atomic weapons to make man want peace, but the atomic bomb was the turn of the screw. The atomic bomb made the prospect of future war unendurable. It has led us up those last few steps to the mountain pass, and beyond there is a different country. Roughly 10 years ago, a visitor to my studio was talking to me about my paintings that tell the story of the opening of the nuclear age and my fingerprints that were, and still are, in the process of building a memorial for the six million European Jews exterminated during the Holocaust. Toward the end of our conversation, he asked me the following question. You live with the atomic bomb and the Holocaust. What do you do for fun? I smiled at him and replied, I have a couple of goofy stuffed animals here and there. When I look at them, they make me laugh.